Wananosaurus is considered a primitive member of the Pachycephalosaurs because it has a flat skull roof and enlarged openings when compared to other later Pachycephalosaurs. Little is known about it, but the skull specimen found appears to have been from a fully grown adult. Stegoceras was once popularly thought to be a head butter, the thick dome of the skull being used to deal out and absorb impacts, this is not that widely accepted anymore however with some studies suggesting the bone of the skull would have actually not been strong enough to repeatedly absorb hits. Goyocephal is noted for having a flat skull as opposed to a more ornate dome than its relative, this could indicate that it might mean that it was more primitive in form. Homolocephal also sported a flat, wedge-shaped skull roof. Nonetheless, the surface of the skull was fairly thickened. It possessed broad hips, the wide pelvis was a sign that it gave birth to live young, the extra space between the hips allowing for gestation of the fetus, a second is that the wide hips allowed the internal organs to sit further back in the body allowing for something called flank budding. Hylocephal managed to evolve the tallest head dome of any currently known Pachycephalosaur genera. The rounded shape of the skull would lessen the contacted surface area during head budding, resulting in glancing blows. Other possibilities include flank budding, defense against predators, or both. The small size of most Pachycephalosaur species and lack of skeletal adaptation indicates that they were not climbers and primarily ate food close to the ground. It is assumed that they lived in the mountains in a temperate climate. It is believed that Pachycephalosaurus was an herbivore and lived primarily off of plants and fruits. Its teeth were incapable of handling some of the tougher foliage like other herbivores of the era, so paleontologists believe that the plants it must have lived off of must have been soft. It is the largest known Pachycephalosaur and the skull was short, and possessed large, rounded eye sockets that faced forward, suggesting that the animal had good eyesight and was capable of binocular vision. Stygimoloch is a dubious genus of Pachycephalosaurid dinosaur as many paleontologists are of the opinion that Stygimoloch represents a juvenile, subadult Pachycephalosaurus. In addition to this another genus named Dracorex has also been perceived to be an even younger Stygimoloch, and it is not out of the question that one day both Stygimoloch and Dracorex may be confirmed as juvenile Pachycephalosaurus. Spherothalus differs from all other Pachycephalosaurids where known in the possession of a parietosquamosal bar that decreases in depth laterally as seen in caudal view and is bordered by a single row of nodes and one lateroventral corner node. It is considered a highly derived Pachycephalosaur. Paradoxically Micropachycephalosaurus is one of the smallest dinosaurs that we know about, yet it easily has one of the longest names. Despite its name and its thick skull roof, it is today considered to more likely be a small ceratopsian dinosaur. Yinlong is the oldest and most primitive ceratopsian known, despite its small size and bipedal stance, the descendants of Yinlong would evolve into the huge quadrupedal herbivores like Triceratops that lived at the end of the Cretaceous. Squamosal ornamentation of the skull is also seen in the Pachycephalosauria, further suggesting that they and the ceratopsian dinosaurs shared common direct ancestors. Chaoyangsaurus lived during the late Jurassic, which indicates to us that the ceratopsian dinosaurs that would be among the dominant dinosaur forms during the late Cretaceous have their evolutionary origins going back at least as far as the late Jurassic. Cetacosaurus is one of the most completely known dinosaur genera. Fossils of hundreds of individuals have been collected so far, including many complete skeletons. Most age classes are represented, from hatchling through to adult, which has allowed several detailed studies of Cetacosaurus growth rates and reproductive biology. 
It probably had complex behaviors, based on the proportions and relative size of the brain. It may have been active for short periods of time during the day and night, and had well-developed senses of smell and vision. It preserved with integument indicated that the animal was countershaded, likely due to preferring a habitat in dense forests with little light. Liaocheratops is interesting to science in many ways than its larger, more famous relatives because it teaches us more about evolution. Basal dinosaurs are critical because they help us to tie different groups of dinosaurs together and map out evolutionary patterns. Aquilops' name was inspired by the way that the beak curves downwards in a manner similar to an eagle's, in eagles this hooked shape allows them to tear off strips of meat from their prey, but ceratopsian dinosaurs like Aquilops were almost certainly exclusive herbivores. Microceratus was likely bipedal for greater mobility, a bipedal stance and small size would mean that it was a fairly agile and fast-running dinosaur, important adaptations as it would likely have been hunted by small theropod. Archaeoceratops also seems to be better suited to a bipedal stance when walking, although it was probably quick to adopt a quadrupedal posture for feeding upon low vegetation. Grasses had not yet evolved so it would have been a browser of low vegetation, something that would not change throughout the lineage of the Ceratopsian dinosaurs. Unlike many later Ceratopsians it had no horns, possessing only a small bony frill projecting from the back of its head. Korea Ceratops is notable for the tall neural spines on its caudal vertebrae, it seems reasonable that they would have supported a growth that resulted in a broad laterally compressed tail of the kind that is commonly seen in creatures that use their tail for swimming. However while the idea that it spent time swimming in the water is a very plausible, wider study of Ceratopsians may yield a more commonly accepted explanation. Many of the basal ceratopsians had deep tails, although not all to the same extent as Korea ceratops, and some remains have even revealed the presence of quill-like structures that would have risen up from the tail, giving the impression that it was even larger than it really was. Montanoceratops was a typical primitive ceratopsian in many respects, distinguished from the later species by the presence of claws, rather than hooves, and by having teeth in its upper jaw, rather than a toothless beak. It would have used its sharp ceratopsian beak to bite off the leaves or needles, its dentry is long with a straight ventral margin. Eudanoceratops, like all ceratopsians, was a herbivore. The short, deep jaws would have given the animal a powerful bite, it may have spent more time on all fours in order to reduce stress on the hips, it is the largest leptoceratopsid known so far. Unlike almost all other dinosaur groups, skulls are the most commonly preserved elements of ceratopsian skeletons and many species are known only from skulls. The large eyes of protoceratops has been suggested it was active for short periods throughout the day, perhaps as a reaction to the arid conditions of the time, it had a large neck frill which was likely used as a display site to impress other members of the species. Other hypotheses about its function include protection of the neck and anchoring of jaw muscles, but the fragility of the frill and the poor leverage offered by possible attachment sites here makes these ideas implausible. Traveling in packs gave individual dinosaurs a better survival rate than traveling alone. Fossil records show that one of the predators that this dinosaur had to contend with was the Velociraptor, as fossilized remains of these two dinosaurs have been found together. Bagaceratops evolved later but retains more primitive characteristics than its earlier relative. The skull of Tyrannoceratops bore a pair of long brow horns like those seen in the Ceratopsidae, although it appears to have been transitional between earlier Ceratopsians and Ceratopsids, and not a Ceratopsid itself.
The frill on Zuniceratops was fenestrated, meaning it was not solid bone but had two large holes in the bone that were grown over with skin. This would have made the frill considerably lighter than it would have been if it was solid throughout, but was not likely a defensive structure as these skin-covered holes would not have stopped a predator. Instead it's more likely that the frill was for displaying to others of its species. The fact that Albertoceratops had large and well-developed brow horns on what is in essence a centrosaurine skull has led to the thinking that Albertoceratops is a basal centrosaurine ceratopsian. Later members of the group would develop considerably reduced brow horns. Diabloceratops was a medium-sized, moderately built, ground-dwelling, quadrupedal herbivore, that had upon the frill a pair of very long spikes which gives its name, devil horns. Monoclonius is now usually considered a nomen dubium. Pending further study, taxonomic confusion was caused by the discovery of Centrosaurus, a very similar genus of Ceratopsian that is known from much better remains. Cynoceratops is also considered to be a basal centrosaurine, and its discovery has shed a little more light on Ceratopsian evolution. Unfortunately however, until additional fossil material can be recovered, reconstructions are reliant upon comparisons with other better known ceratopsians. The presence of pneumatic elements in the nasal bones of Nasutoceratops are a unique trait and are unknown in any other ceratopsid, and the curved horizontally projecting brow horn arrangement was likened to that of modern cattle. Even though it was not large for a ceratopsian, Centrosaurus was not small either. Remains of numerous individuals including the remains of several hundred dinosaurs in a bone bed indicate that it was one of the most common dinosaurs of the time and location, and may have moved around in herds numbering hundreds of individuals. It has been used as the base of the ceratopsian group Centrosaurinae. They are noted for having short neck frills and single nasal horn, although some members do have brow horns, as well as further spikes that can and often do extend from the edges of the frill. The arrangement of spikes was key in identifying the remains as a distinct genus which led to them being named as Rubiosaurus, a reference to the similarity to the spikes you might see on a bush. The skull remains indicate that the horn was very broad at the base, though its length is uncertain. Ceratopsid teeth, including those of Styracosaurus, were arranged in groups called batteries. Older teeth on top were continually replaced by the teeth underneath them. Unlike hadrosaurids, which also had dental batteries, ceratopsid teeth sliced but did not grind. The large frill on Styracosaurus may have helped to increase body area to regulate body temperature, like the ears of the modern elephant. The nasal horn of Iniosaurus is quite unusual in that it curves forward to point towards the ground, it is though this horn was a sexually selected characteristic that was most developed in the largest and most mature individuals. It was the only ceratopsian in this bone bed, and other micro-fossils of aquatic mollusks suggest that the ground would have once been underwater. Probably because the herd clustered around a diminishing water hole during the dry season that was not replenished by rain in time to save the herd. Achillosaurus may represent something of a transition as even though it has two distinct horns that rise from the top of its neck frill like in Iniosaurus, it has a large nasal boss as seen in Pachyrhinosaurus. This last dinosaur has become a favorite amongst Ceratopsian dinosaur enthusiasts because of the large bony growth called a boss that is present on top of its snout, a second smaller boss was also present over the eyes and is sometimes close to the nasal boss. It still possessed some small horns, particularly around the edges of the frill.
The reason for the highly ornate form of Cosmoceratops seems to have been a result from living in a restricted habitat. Not long after the Chasmosaurine Ceratopsians appeared in Laramidia, they seem to have become isolated in northern and southern populations due to geological barriers in central Laramidia. Also since the frill in these parts was soft tissue, Chasmosaurus may have flushed blood into the area to make the colors even more vivid. The flushing of blood has also brought forth ideas of a possible heat exchange device for thermoregulation, with blood flushed into the area to allow it to cool across a larger surface area. However, because the large fenestrae were filled only with skin, the frill would have provided only minimal defense against a predator. The habitat Aguhaceratops lived in may have been a swamp, due to the nature of the sediments, its biggest predator could be the giant crocodiles such as Dinosuchus. With an upper size approaching 7 meters in length, Pentaceratops had few predators to worry about when fully grown. It is known for having one of the largest neck frills of this group, and is part of the reason why it is regarded as having the largest skull for any land vertebrate. Coahuilaceratops attained overnight fame amongst the Ceratopsian dinosaurs because it is thought to have the longest brow horns of any within the group. These horns is taken as a means of display for it, not only to recognize others of the species but to impress members of the opposite sex. Studies of fossil sites where Anchiceratops remains have been found have revealed that it lived around estuaries, this may explain why its remains are rare when compared to the remains of other Ceratopsians known to live on open plains. Arinoceratops lived in a wet coast land with warm summers but cool winters. It was likely preyed upon by Albertosaurus. It would have used its sharp ceratopsian beak to bite off the leaves or needles. Its habitat was densely forested. Regaloceratops was named for its plated frill, which its describers thought looked somewhat like a crown. The specimen found was given the nickname, Hellboy, for its horns and the difficulty of removing it from the matrix. Named in reference to the more famous Triceratops, Eotriceratops was a large ceratopsian dinosaur of the late Cretaceous, at 3 meters long from the snout to the tip of the neck frill, the skull of it is also immense. The skull at the base of the left brow horn has bite marks which indicates that the left horn may once have been in the mouth of a predator like a tyrannosaur. Torosaurus is noted for having one of the largest skulls of not just any dinosaur but any land animal. Most of this is physical length formed by the neck frill which grows out from the back of the skull, which covers the neck, but was almost certainly for display as opposed for defense. The defense theory is no longer thought to be a primary function given to save weight the bone of the frill was relatively thin and perforated with large openings. Bearing a large bony frill and three horns on the skull, and its large four-legged body possessing similarities with the modern rhinoceros, Triceratops is one of the most recognizable of all dinosaurs and the best-known ceratopsid. But many features about it are quite unknown by the public, Triceratops was probably omnivorous, its life still was more similar to modern bears or pigs than rhinoceros. Most ceratopsid traveled in herd, it's not sure if Triceratops was a solitary animal or not. It was one of the last Ceratopsian genera to appear before the end of the Mesozoic. The related Taurosaurus, and the more distantly related diminutive Leptoceratops, were also present, though their remains have been rarely encountered. 